Hey, on November 1, 2023, Pope Francis published an apostolic letter calling for a paradigm shift in theology. He seeks to shift Catholic thought so that, quote, the word about God, unquote, that's, that's what theology is, it's the word about God, would be guided more by culture and context, he says, than by abstract ideas. Now, Francis says that theological reflection is called to a turning point. He calls it, it's called to a paradigm shift. He's calling it a courageous cultural revolution. And he wants to shift to a fundamentally contextual theology. That's his, the phrase that we have here. Now, the idea is to look to culture and to lived experience as sources there that will guide the interpretation of the gospel. What is the gospel? Look to the experiences of different people. He said this, quote, priority must be given to people's common sense, which he says is a theological place in which many images of God live. Mm, yeah, I think many different images of God live in people's common sense, but I'm not sure that it's common sense or sense. But the different ideas that people happen to have about who God is, why, what, what authority would these have for us? When God has revealed in his word, you know, the facts, uh, why would we look to culture to understand who God is when culture is distorted? The Catholic network, EWTN, the Eternal Word Network, noted that, quote, the Pope's shift in emphasis in Catholic theology was reflected in the new statutes issued for the Pontifical Academy of Theology. Ad theologium promovendum shift the 200-year-old institute's focus from, quote, promoting the dialogue between reason and faith, unquote, to promoting, quote, transdisciplinary dialogue with philosophies, sciences, arts, and all other knowledge, unquote. So making culture a primary source of insight is fraught with pitfalls. But Catholic theology already accepts tradition as an authority. The current official catechism of the church teaches, quote, the church to whom the transmission and interpretation of revelation is trusted does not derive her certainty about all revealed truth from the Holy Scriptures alone. Both scripture and tradition must be accepted and honored with equal sentiments of devotion and reverence. And that's item 80. And if you go to item 95 in the catechism, it says sacred tradition, sacred scripture, and the magisterium of the church are so connected and associated that one of them cannot stand without the others. Now, that is a true statement. When you put tradition and the Bible and this group of teachers together, the magisterium, and they all are kind of interrelated. If, if, if you take away the tradition, you won't have the same teaching with the scripture, with tradition, with the ideas of the teachers, that as in contrast to just the teaching of the Bible alone. Those would come out two different ways for sure. Now, whether making tradition or culture one's measure, a norm outside the Bible here is being added beside the Bible, and that's a problem. See, Francis even calls for priority to be, quote, given to the people's common sense. Francis even says that the people will have unexpected images of God, more or less, if we draw those images from the culture. Well, yes, they will, and then they might not match what the Bible says. Now, those groups which view the papacy as an ally in bringing about social changes that they desire they will appreciate these signals from the Vatican. But there is prophetic significance going on. Initiatives such as the papal position that was unveiled on November 1 position her as an ally to globalist technocrats, themselves fully engaged already in reshaping culture toward their own ends. So what Francis does, he dresses the papacy here, he clothes it as though it's malleable and kind of plastic. Now, the reality is very different. The Roman Catholic Church is far-reaching in its activities. Moves like this one by Pope Francis only increase papal power in the circles of one-world control. Friends, every principle of the papacy that existed in past ages exists today. Signal center one thing, methods uh, modified or another, the record of centuries of papal oppression calls all of us to vigilance. I hope you'll subscribe to our little newsletter that comes out once or more a month. As we are going through now, we're going to uh, keep us up to date on the developments of these three areas, the, the religious area, the political area, and the uh, commercial area. Those three that are listed in Revelation 18, uh, those three powers that combine together in the snapshots there in Revelation 18, right before God destroys them. Uh, there's a picture of a world under this influence of this threefold group 
And we're going to sort of track that. If you want to come along, check in, just sign up for the newsletter. God bless you.